Hello and welcome to this brief series of videos designed to help you, the absolute beginner, get up to speed quickly with JavaScript. And we'll do this by discussing the fundamentals of what you need to know in order to write your own interactive web pages and create native Windows 8 Metro style applications. My name is Bob Tabor and I typically talk about C Sharp, Visual Basic, ASP.NET, and other .NET related topics on my website, www.learnvisualstudio.net. However, Channel 9 asked me to record this series of videos because JavaScript is a programming language that, as a software developer, you simply cannot ignore. Uh, I should know, I tried to ignore it for like 15 years. I actually was at the conference in San Francisco where, uh, it, back in December of 1995, where JavaScript was first demonstrated and announced. And at that time, it seemed like a great idea, but quite frankly, it, it looked kind of like a novelty. And subsequently, it was ignored by most web developers, myself included. But over time, web browsers matured, users' demands for applications inside of the web browser became more sophisticated, and JavaScript emerged as the premier programming language of the future. Not just for web pages, but for building real applications. In fact, in September 2011, Microsoft announced JavaScript would be treated as a first-class citizen for building native Windows applications alongside of C++ and C Sharp. So it's no longer just a way to spice up web pages. Just about every week, somebody out there uses JavaScript to do some amazing things. My favorite is the guy who recently ported the old 3D first-person shooter Doom using JavaScript. Furthermore, JavaScript has moved merely from being inside of a web browser only to also being used on the web server for application logic, for access to shared resources like files and, and a database server, and so on. So this series of lessons is designed to help an absolute beginner understand the environment, the language, and the conventions of JavaScript in, hopefully, an approachable manner. If you're already an experienced software developer, well, frankly, this series might move a little bit slow for you. Honestly, there's probably some better ways out there to spend your time. I want to be clear and thorough for the student who's coming to JavaScript as a first programming language, and so we're going to take our time getting to our destination. So here's what I want to accomplish in this series. We're going to start off, first of all, by showing you how to create a simple JavaScript example using a simple programming environment that we'll, we'll duct tape together, Notepad and Internet Explorer. And then I'm going to also show you the free powerful tool from Microsoft, uh, Visual Web Developer Express Edition, to help author HTML pages and JavaScript as well, and some of the advantages that we get by using a free tool. We're going to examine other free tools, like those that are built right into Internet Explorer to help us debug our JavaScript code, as well as some other uh, tools that are available over the Internet at large. Next, I'm going to walk you through the most important language features of JavaScript. These features appear in most programming languages, things like variables and operators and expressions, decision and iteration statements, scope, functions, and so on. JavaScript is a very small programming language, uh, but it's incredibly malleable and flexible. We're not going to get too complex in this series. However, I keep learning things about JavaScript just about every single day uh, about how to combine these simple language elements into, in new and interesting ways and to do some things that are fairly complex. Next up, I'm going to introduce the idea of the document object model, or rather, the DOM. So when your web browser downloads a web page and it tries to parse through all the HTML in that web page, it'll start creating a series of objects in the computer's memory. Each object represents an HTML element, as well as its content, its attributes, and so on. So you can use JavaScript to access or change the DOM in response to events that occur on the web page. So for example, a user may click on this, or he hovers over that. So part of the challenge then is learning how to respond to those events and how to access just the parts of the document object model that you need to to accomplish what you want to accomplish, to show or hide some text, to add new elements to the document object model dynamically, to inspect data that the user entered into an HTML form field before sending it onto the server, and so on. So then we're going to talk about jQuery, which is an open source library of functionality written entirely in JavaScript that makes things about JavaScript easier. It smooths over the rough spots of JavaScript. For starter, it uh, uh, when working with multiple web browsers of various implementations of JavaScript, again, it smooths over uh, the different implementations between vendors. There are other features that make JavaScript more powerful and simpler as well. 
Microsoft has fully embraced this library, including in some of their software development programming environment templates, and even contributing to the project. Frankly, I don't know anybody who isn't already a serious web developer who is not using the jQuery library. So it's important that you understand what it is as soon as possible. Reliance on jQuery isn't the only popular practice in JavaScript programming. I want to make sure that you're aware of a few common practices and conventions that have been developed by the web development community. While there's no single quote unquote right way uh, to include JavaScript functionality into your application or web page, there are definitely a few wrong ways and there are some best practices that make things a little bit easier long term. So I want to introduce you to, uh, to several of these ideas so that you can avoid making the mistakes that will cause uh, well, web developers, if not small children, to laugh at you in the streets, okay? Some books and articles on the web unfortunately demonstrate practices that are frowned upon. For example, how to include JavaScript in a web page. There's at least three different ways to do it, but only one that most developers agree is the best way to achieve this, and we'll talk about that soon. So in the past, JavaScript has been used for a few important activities in the web browser. Uh, just to name a few, uh, it's often been used to show and hide text, images, or other HTML elements in the web page based on some interaction between the user and the web page. Uh, it's been used to apply styling to HTML on the fly. JavaScript has been used to validate the entries uh, of users into form fields embedded on the web page as a first line of defense before sending data up to the web server for processing. Uh, JavaScript has been used to animate elements on a screen and this could include graphics that are moving around the page or content that's sliding into place or color or opacity transitions and things of that nature. And I've already referenced how entire games can be loaded into the web browser like Doom or Angry Birds. Uh, JavaScript can be used to communicate with a web server exchanging data back and forth without the need for a complete HTTP POST or GET uh, operation for the entire web page. We'll be demonstrating that much later in this video series. This has become one of the most vital, uh, vital features of JavaScript and jQuery to make pages smarter and more responsive. So HTML5 and CSS3 have reduced the need for JavaScript to be used in some of these scenarios, quite frankly. Some animations, some form validation, these are things that have been taken care of by HTML5 and CSS3. Still, if we want to move beyond the basics, we're going to need to understand JavaScript. At the very least, if you try to copy some code from an article online or in a book, you should be able to at least look at it and understand how it's working and know what to touch and what to leave alone. So hopefully this series of lessons can get you further along in your journey to learn JavaScript and really get it under your belt. And so that's really the main goal in this video series, as the old expression goes, to give you enough rope to shoot yourself in the foot with. Uh, I'm really just kidding. What I really hope is that this fundamental series will give you enough of a foundation that you can make good decisions and decipher other people's JavaScript code so that you can safely modify it and include it in your own web pages. And perhaps as you grow as a JavaScript developer, you can write large passages of JavaScript on your own without using any code snippets. Hopefully this will be one of the first steps that you take to learning JavaScript uh, or learning even more about JavaScript and programming concepts. All right, so before we get started, the videos embedded on the web page on Channel 9's website are presented somewhat smaller than how I originally record them, which is high def, 1280 by 720. I'm going to increase the font size of the text that I type into Notepad. However, if the text seems obscured or difficult to read, it might have to do with the speed of your internet connection and how the streaming video works. In that case, you may want to download the videos to your computer first and watch them there instead of trying to stream them. Also, you should be able to watch the videos full screen. There's a little icon in the player bar that would allow you to see the videos full screen if the text is a little bit too small for you to read. So take a moment, become familiar with the environment, see where the download links are for the videos near the player where you're currently watching this video or uh, take a look at the player bar to see how you can uh, expand to full screen and then get back into the browser uh, viewing experience. Also, just want to let you know that I have a folder with all the code files and graphics that I'm going to use for this series of videos. Uh, you can see it's here on my desktop uh, and it's filled with a number of HTML pages, JavaScript, some CSS, 
some image files and some other data files as well. Uh, make sure you download it. I'll explain the naming convention as we go throughout the series, but you can probably tell already that I'm matching up the file number with the video lesson number. So for example, this file would belong to the 15th video in this series of videos. Finally, you are in control of the viewing experience. To get the most out of this or any video series, you should become an active learner. Type the code in yourself with your own hands uh, to build muscle memory and to force your brain to understand what it is the speaker is attempting to explain. Pause, rewind the video, ask questions in the comments area below this video. Uh, active learners learn more quickly. Commit the time and you'll have this under your belt in no time at all, I promise. Okay. So we're gonna get started with some baby steps in the next lesson. I want to encourage you to get a plan in place to follow along and enjoy the process of learning. You can do this. It's fun and it's exciting. And we're gonna get started in the next lesson. I'm excited for you. I hope you're excited too. I'll see you there. Thank you. Mm -hmm.